GSL. Welcome back. Code A. GSL. Wolf. It's, Artosis. It's time for the final best of three. And it's going to be between uh, Sora and Dark. Protoss versus Zerg. Going I think this is going to be a pretty fantastic one. Yeah, this one's really hard to call because going into this uh, originally, just looking at the group from the outside in, I was thinking Sora is heavily favored here, but Dark has played some really good series. His series against Innovation, even though he lost, it was really solid. Mm -hmm. And that ZVZ that he just played, he was really on point, very good decision making, really nice timings. Um, so I actually put them pretty even here. I am giving uh, Sora a an edge here because of stylistic reasons. Um, I feel like Sora is one of the most reactive Protosses that there is in PvZ. He really scouts out what's happening. He uses a lot of hallucinations uh, very early on to figure out what you're doing, and he's not afraid to do things like build extra cannons okay. or uh, you know do anything like out of the ordinary suddenly if he thinks it's going to help him survive. And someone that will play like that I think is going to play basically perfectly against Dark because Dark will do things that catch you off guard that you're not used to. And if you're willing to do things such as make a bunch of extra cannons against like a Roach Hydra timing push that you didn't expect, that might be the edge that you need to beat him. Yeah, he's uh, up against a very aggressive Zerg player. He does like to go for those timings. I, I don't want to give an edge to either player. I want to give an edge to the player who wins the first map because then they get that, that extra map pick mm -hmm. and I, I really... I feel like that's going to be the edge that that breaks the uh, camel's back, if you if you will. I see what you're saying, um, and I would do this more like maybe last season, to be honest, because we have three new maps, and both players could have a lot of new stuff on these maps that no one's seen yet. Yeah. So it's a good point because uh, uh, last season's maps are definitely much more figured out. Yeah. Than yeah. the ones we have. This but the season. maps being a little bit less figured out so far. The thing is, they might be balanced in such a way that you're completely right, where it's like, well, no, these are really great counterpick maps. Yeah. But I don't know. I really wonder, see. like, I'd like to ask the players really, like, how well they feel they know the maps mm -hmm. um, because they've picked them quite a bit. So it seems like yeah. they definitely have figured some things out. We oftentimes see on the new maps a pick, like, a Stargate proxy location that we have, <laughs> that, that's, like, very clearly a really good one. Gets scouted, though, or the uh, innovation barracks where he just is like, well, these are really good locations for proxies. Yeah. I'm just going to take this first win, this first best of three, and... Things like that, right? I think like people have found more exploitations on the map than actual best ways to play the map. That's what it feels like from watching these two groups so far. Sure. Today. And I mean, for a new map, doesn't that make sense? Yeah. In a way. Of course. That's that's kind of how like anything new in any competitive game works. You know, you find the cheese strategies yeah. first, the rush strategies. You exploit, you exploit, exploit until it starts getting more figured out. And yeah. the way to figure it out actually is to exploit exactly. because you're like, okay, well, I mean, that, the way I exploited it that time, it's kind of been fixed. There's workarounds. There's ways that people know how to counter that. But still, why was that good? Maybe I can build off that and make a more solid strategy exactly. using something similar. Because, you know, at the end of the day, what is the goal of any game is to win. And the easiest way to win is the best way to win, right? generally speaking. So uh, the pa fastest and most consistent way to victory, if that's an exploit, uh, until that's figured out, that's the way to go because you want to win. That's uh, how competitive gaming works. Indeed. Well, we'll see uh, if there are any exploits coming up in these maps. I'm not sure what our first map is going to be here. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Um, and I don't think they're in the lobby just yet because I looked over and checked. Mm. But uh, I'm not sure what's going on. There might be some sort of technical problem or ptosis. Could be. That's okay. That happens so generally once a day. <laughs> you know, we talked about foods earlier and how I'm not really a big fruit guy at mm -hmm. all or ice mm -hmm. cream. Um, besides meat, is there something that you, like, just cannot stand food-wise? I don't really like um, carrots too much. Like, you... Not a fan of carrots, and I can't really eat celery. Like, it, both carrots and celery have to be diced, like, really small for me to eat them. Okay. Like, carrots must be mixed in, and celery is, like, so stringy, I just have a very hard time, like, chewing it and swallowing it. I don't know. Oh, uh, okay. So, but, I mean, you, you you could eat it, though. Like, you're not... No, I don't mind the taste. Okay. Uh, the taste of carrots, I mind a little bit. They need to be masked a little bit. Okay. Um, That's funny to me, because, like, to me, carrots have a very light taste. It's hard to taste, you know. I mean, I yeah, could, I could I tell, when I eat it, I'm like, okay, that tastes like a carrot, but it's not like... It tastes like uh, an asparagus, where I'm like, 
That's I a very love, heavy flavor. I think I just, I like strong taste a lot. Like, I use a lot of hot sauce. I love pickles. I yeah. love asparagus, stuff like that. Asparagus is really good. Yeah. One of my favorite foods, actually. I had a lot of asparagus at your birthday party. Yeah. One of my favorite foods. That's really exactly. Good. There you have it. It's really good. Yeah. Um, I'm just, like, thinking about food a lot right now. Mm. But, uh, you like, hungry? Uh, not actually. I ate a lot of food during the break. Mm. Um, do you like beef stroganoff? I wouldn't know. It's you, a meat. So. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's funny. But it's if you but if you removed beef and you had it. What's stroganoff? It's like just like beef looking beef flavored sauce. But I mean, imagine that it was beef flavored and only without any beef with mushrooms and rice. It sounds good. And some onions usually, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I'm not sure what beef tastes like, but. Uh, I mean, yeah, it sounds good. I love mushrooms. I'm sorry, and rice I, and I asked you like a really offensive question. Like, I'm trying it's to back out of this. I'm trying to put up force fields. Like, I'm the sentry that just got caught, but I have full energy. I'm trying to surround myself with a force field donut yeah. until this game starts. And I'm just a bunch of zerglings circling, waiting. Yeah, I'm like, do I have enough time with these force fields for the game starts? I think I'm running out. <laughs> I think I think you've already run out. Uh, but no, I can't think of any other foods that I don't eat really. Like, I'm pretty non-picky. Yeah. So you're really not. I I really am. Like I'm. I don't like mayonnaise and like tomatoes and the fruit. You don't like mayonnaise. Cream. Nah. I, I thought I you're from like Georgia. I am, and there's a lot of mayonnaise there. But I'm. Yeah. I'm always avoiding. Don't it. they call that the mayonnaise state? No, I don't think so. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's I guess technically the peach state, but I hate peaches like more than any other type of fruit actually. Really? Yeah, uh, they peaches are okay. By them. I, I can't even like get close You don't like them. them at all? No. Is it just because you like maybe had too many as a kid or something? I'm not sure what the reason is. Maybe one day I ate like a bad peach and it made me sick or something when I was like oh, that really can young. That can happen. I have like a lot of theories on why I, I can't stand fruit, but I've never been able to find the right answer. I don't know. I think it's just you're really picky. I think Parents so should have made you eat more stuff when you they were They tried to, man. Boy, did they try. But, yeah. uh Wolf is too stubborn. Sometimes I would throw up after I ate it, so it was kind of hard to force. Oh, wow, me. that's weird. Yeah, well, let's go into this match. The final match of the night to decide our last Codest player of the day, Dark versus Sora. We're starting on the King Stage on the station. In our top left, the underdog Zerg player is still very good. He is Dark. Very focused. A very handsome player. Indeed. I really like his hair. Yeah, me too. His opponent, Frodos. Thora. Very fast player. And uh, a lot of people were looking like he was going to be, like you said, the new parting. Just one of these up and coming Frodosses mm -hmm. that everyone was expecting to just crush face, continue to crush face because he already was. Um, and. I would say he fell off. You know, your your take on it earlier was that this Protoss had this sudden success spike. And so it, yeah. it was like he was buried amongst other Protosses that were doing Indeed. well. Yeah, it's like suddenly everyone figured out Protoss at once, and he wasn't so special anymore. Uh, and maybe he had a little dip in there as well, but I think that what I said is reasonably accurate. Well, I noticed some truth to it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's, that's a pretty good way to put it. I mean... Definitely, there's some correlation on what you said to to what's happened. Uh, now, this drone scout here sees that it's forged first, so he immediately reacts by pulling his first drone to make the hatchery back into the main to make a spawning pool. Even makes it on the edge of his creep, mm -hmm. and I don't think he's gonna pile on, or he's not gonna let this pile on finish before he's gonna put it down. And yeah, that would be my guess. Uh, you generally do want to cancel there. Yeah, but the thing is, uh, he already knew that the drone was going back to, that would likely take a third base. How much do you like the pylon block here? I mean, obviously the hatchery here is is better to take, but I think he could have just delayed a little bit more with his probe anyways. Well, with two hit points left, you got to be careful, because if they hit you once, you might not get out of there, or you have to give up the hatchery, because you can't stay there anymore. So um, I liked it. I think it's fine because you just you kind of slow them down a little bit. It's harder to transfer over to that third base. They have to be a little bit more careful in case you're going to attack them or something. Yeah, I think I I'm, like it overall. I think I'm overthinking this a little bit right now. Maybe it's a little Ursa calf. Look at all those dead animals right yeah, nearby. Yeah, he's like, the cave. he's like, wow, those are my parents. What happened while I was gone? 
That's like when Luke comes back, man. <laughs> <laughs> Just watching that movie the other day. It's actually like really sad the first time you watch it. It's really sad every time. Actually, yeah, it really is. But like the first time you watch it, it's you know what? Screw more that. Sad. They didn't want him to go and and train and be part of the rebellion. They aren't very, very supportive, Uncle and Aunt. No. I'm they may have raised him for the first twenty years of his life, but well, beyond that. I bet I bet that uh, they would have changed their minds about it really quick had they known what was about to happen. Yeah, why not? If they had known what was about to happen, they probably would have stayed indoors. It's all his it's all his sisters falling away, so those joints down the tattoo. Yeah. It's kinda messed up. Yeah. Could have actually just like hoped for galactic peace, the yeah. Empire and stuff. But I would have just like, sided with Vader. Forget it. Yeah. She's all serious about that. Send those plans and stuff. <laughs> Well, looking at this game, third base going up for Zerg. Also mining some gas at the moment. And a Stargate does start. Okay, so here we have it. Uh, now, Sora, before on this map earlier today, went for, if I recall correctly, plus two blink into a third base. Yeah. Which is something that uh, we've seen a lot from Sora in the past. What will he do with the Stargate, though? Well, it's just a completely different opening. Uh, and I think he's going to go Phoenix's. That seems to be the way this matchup is played right now more mm -hmm. than, than any other way. Uh, to me, on a personal level, I, this this kind of speaks to me as he's saying, uh, and this, this may sound harsh to some, but I'm just going to say my, my feelings on this. I think he's just respects Dark as an opponent more. And instead of just trying to you know, play that, mm -hmm. that Forge style and, and go into that type of aggressive... Everything I'm saying is being neutralized by this Voider right now that he's going forward. <laughs> but I thought he was going to go Phoenix to try to get ahead by sure. harassment instead of actually just trying to take a third base with some upgrades and then just play the later game because he's feeling like, okay, I'm just going to beat him no matter what in the late game mm -hmm. with some Blink Stalkers controlling the map. Because that's what he did. He, he made the map his. Well, right now with this Void Ray coming out, I wonder what the plan is here. Now, he's getting plus one as well. I think he's just going to go into a third, but... Way back in time, we did have some funny, like, plus one Void Ray seven gates. He's making a second one. Uh, I think that we may see something like that. So every, everything I just said about him really respecting his opponent um, you know, may not be true. Maybe he's respecting his opponent so much that he doesn't feel comfortable playing a real game against him. No, nope, he makes a robo. Yeah. This is definitely going to be a third base. <laughs> you don't go robo plus multiple Void Rays plus plus one and go for a two base attack. That's, like, just way overboard. Now, because there are Void Rays out... This group of speedlings is going to deny this third base for a long time. You just can't clean that up with like a void ray or two void rays. You'll never get this to finish up. Yeah, it's, it's just way too low on hit points as well. Like it just started. Even if it was full on hit points, these could probably kill it off. Yeah, as long there's no Nexus cannon. I mean, I think you're right. It's just, oh my god, he actually no killed it. Wow, that's actually. That's like unforgivably sloppy by Sora. Yeah. Uh, with this robotics finishing up, one thing he can use the Void Rays for, if he ever feels comfortable enough to with the speed link pressure, is go out and try to clean up creep tumors, keep mm -hmm. the creep spread down. We've seen this uh, way back when it was delivery. Yeah, that's true. But we do have a Hydralis den on the way, and Dark added five gases as soon as he got rid of that Nexus. So he's going to be able to transition rather quickly here, and those Void Rays I don't think are going to be too much of a problem. Those two random Voids that really haven't done all that much. And in fact, because of the choice of the Void Rays, he's not even able to take his third base yet. Like, if he had gone Oracle into Void Rays, maybe you could take that third by having the Oracle with its high damage output against Zerglings helping defend it. Yeah. Well, that's a suspicious pylon over there. Hmm. Probably just going to be for Zealot Harassment later on in the game. Yeah, he did something rather similar before. Yeah, on the left side of the map. Mm-hmm. Had to knock down the rocks for that. This one, I guess, would just be targeted to take out that uh, third base. Yeah. Kind of a long walk, but that's okay because he can go behind, like shift Q it through. He could go attack the fourth later on. Yeah. I think uh, you know, he chooses to do it on the right side this time because maybe Dark was watching you know, the game. For sure. And he's like, well, what if I do this twice? Like He's going to know, so I'm going to do it on the right side this time. I have to agree. It's really smart to have two different builds for the map. Chainslings trying to sneak their way in here, get some extra info. He's going to be able to defend his third base this time, but it's so late compared to how he'd like it to be. Well, let's uh, double scout on these Hydras here. <laughs> Indeed it is. The Hydras moving out at the moment. This is that aggressive style you were talking about. Just from the beginning, the, the commitment to speedlings before he even really 
uh, wind down that Hydro's path. He's just constantly been trying to deny this third. And what do you feel about this? I, I think this might be enough. Um, well, there's one Colossus out already, right? I think the first one's about to pop. I may be mistaken. I oh, maybe. Yeah, you're right. You're right. So, uh, with one Colossus, no range. He's got a good amount of force fields, but these are going to pick at the gates, which is kind of annoying. Yeah, right outside of the overcharge yeah. range. I think he's going to be okay, because you'd have to super commit here, especially with that overcharge. Oh, boy. Maybe I am wrong. <laughs> that Gets was through those force fields, man. That was a really nice run around. He's going to lose so many sentries here. Oh, my God. And now with Void Ray, oh, this is just not going well at all. Yep. If he can break through that Zealot Wall, there he goes. And uh, there goes the Colossus. He can actually maybe use probes to fight to save it. But uh, they still get into the main base here. More probes going to die there. And this has already been a decent trade for the units he's, he's fought with here. I got a question for you, Wolf. Sure. Was this build too fancy? The Void Ray one? Yeah, I Two so. Void Rays kind of float around, try to take a third. Colossus, add two Stargates, random four sentries. I mean, what are the... Is he just expecting a Mutalist switch here? Is that what you're, you're thinking with the Phoenixes? Because... Otherwise, they're not going to no. be too useful Phoenixes, here. I mean, they're going to be better than gateway units against that smaller amount of Hydras now. Like, would you expect him to make more Hydras at this point? You saved your Colossus. You're obviously making more Colossus. Uh, I would expect him to maybe switch up his units a little bit, whether that's Mutas or perhaps that's just going into some more Roaches and droning up extra. I think the Phoenixes are actually a pretty good call. Okay. I feel like the build is... Uh, it, it it's just not something we've seen before, so it's hard for me to judge it, but it, it definitely didn't go as planned, right? Mm -hmm. I, I think he's not expecting a third base to get attacked like this. This is cute, but I don't... No, no it's don't never going to kill like, that hatchery in a million years. Yeah. And that's too many hydras for his uh, phoenixes, I believe. Six phoenixes. Oh, wow, he flies over. Oh, man, that is sloppiness. What has happened with Sora this game? He's just made a few critical mistakes. Yeah. Like not canceling that Nexus. That's a huge mistake that costs him so much. And now he's shown like this huge group of phoenixes that cost him quite a bit. Yeah, now he'll spend 600 like, gas on those. Dark's like, well, I'm not going to do this for sure. He may be trying to force a Corruptor reaction out of him, perhaps, while he's switching into Void Rays, but even that's like a weird, weird, like, justification. Yeah, I think that's, I think you are stretching to make it look like a really smart move. Yeah. Um, well, he's got Vipers out now. Yeah, those two Colossi are not long for this world if he's able to yank them. Indeed. And with those Void Rays and how many uh, Hydras are here, like, the army of Sora is just so well countered at the moment. Just starting the Twilight Council now. Oh, God. These uh, Overlord losses at home are going to be a problem if he holds. Well, that's a pretty big if, man. He's not going to hold. There's just no way. Look at Goodbye. that. First Already that's gone. dead. Yeah, he's dead. He's. This is the absolute end. There's just no possibility. Yeah, this oh, is like... Yeah, he does get that Colossus. And everything else dies without hardly killing a thing. Nasty, man. All the DPS here. Yeah. Cover your eyes, Protoss players. This kind is of, hard to watch. Kind of a funny build here from Sora. Not really a, a fan of the way he played this one out. The Void Rays were just very different from the get-go. And, like, I'm not sure exactly what he was trying to get done with them. Whatever it was, it didn't work. That's how, what That's what I know. I'm grasping at straws to try to explain it, right? Like, you know, fake out. Maybe he thinks it's a Void Ray all-in. Or maybe he thinks it's a completely different type of a build entirely. Uh... It doesn't, it doesn't seem like it wasn't a polished build. It just seemed like it was poor execution of the build. Like, not canceling his Nexus. And yeah, that was that was a huge mistake. The flying the Phoenixes in was a kind of a weird mistake. Um, the thing is, I guess what really threw him off in this game, I think the real turning point was the fact that Dark made a large group of Speedlings. And that large group of Speedlings... The thing is, I think 